Howdy all, I'm Matt on the Renaissance Nerd. Here we are, my friends. We are a mere month away from the end of 2023. And you got to start asking the question, this pop culture war, this culture war thing, where are we? What have we done? What have we won? What have we lost? It's a rather complicated situation when you stop to think about it. We've been at this for a few years now. Myself coming up on my three-year anniversary in February of being an active YouTuber, an active voice in pushing back against the destruction of all we hold dear and close to our little nerd and geek hearts. But here's the thing again. What have we won and what have we lost? Because <laughs> we lost a lot before the war even started. Let's take stock and let's wonder and think and perhaps prognosticate about where we're going to go in 2024 and beyond. First of all, what have we lost? We lost, <laughs> we lost the big guns. We lost Star Wars. We did. Dizzy Star Wars is an abomination. It is a complete departure from what George intended for his galaxy far, far away because George gave us real Star Wars, even though he didn't directly write the EU. He was the overseer. He was the man who pushed the button, the man who said no if something didn't work right. Dizzy Star Wars ruined a lot, and it made a lot of people apathetic, blackpilled, for me, myself included. I was blackpilled for a very long time time until I found that shred of hope, that light at the end of the tunnel, and I clawed and pulled and scratched my way out of it back to the surface where I am now a happy warrior to defend real Star Wars with every single breath I have until the end of my days. But we have lost a lot. And by saying we've lost Star Wars, I don't mean we've lost Star Wars. I mean, we've lost the goodwill of the people. I mentioned People of black-pilled, apathetic. That's the loss here. That people who were generations, decades-long fans, whether you were an EU guy or gal, some people are gone. They can't even stomach to look at actual Star Wars. They can't watch the original trilogy without feeling sick, without thinking, oh my God, it leads to Jake Skywalker and green titty milk. <laughs> See, I'm capable of separating the two. I know that Disney Star Wars is an illegitimate timeline. Therefore, they can keep trashing it all they want. It doesn't ruin my fun. It doesn't ruin what I love, the franchise closest to my heart, because I was there first. They can't take that away from me. That means they win. But we, Star Wars is damaged because the fans are gone. That's why I say we've lost Star Wars. We lost Star Trek along the way, too. New Trek has done irreparable damage to the brand. It's hard to look at it and understand where you go from here. Picard Season 3 was a nice little thing that happened, but it was a nice little thing that happened. Terry Metalis, a guy who gets it, gave us real Star Trek for a brief moment. Wasn't perfect, but it was still fun. It was a nice little goodbye. See you later. I will cherish you along with real Star Trek at the same time. But that's just it. We lost it because, again... People walked away. People didn't come back. And you haven't made new fans. That's the one thing you can say about across the board when it comes to all these damaged franchises. No new fans. No new, no new real fans of Star Wars. No new real fans of Star Trek. Got the old guard like me holding tight, not letting go, soldiering forward, planting that flag, and saying this is where we make our stand. We're not done, though. Problem is, a lot more was lost in this time, especially this year. Go look at Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time, uh, one of the most venerable f fantasy franchises in literature. But what happened? Amazon and people who hate Robert Jordan's ideals got a hold of it, broke it up, Frankensteined it back together, and pushed out an abomination. And now that is a franchise that's never going to go anywhere. People who love the books will always have the books, but they will never get any sort of ad proper adaptation now. It'll be another 20, 30 years probably before somebody's brave enough once the abomination on Amazon is over. Once that's done, it's going to be a long time before somebody gets works up enough courage to say, okay, we're going to do it right. Let's see if we can capture the imaginations of a whole new generation. That one's done before it even got started. Rings of Power... We come to that, except that's the, one of the bright spots, guys. That's one of the bright spots. 
Rings of Power. That was already two years ago now. And they're afraid to put out season two because they know what's going to happen. Tolkien fans, Lord of the Ring fans, they showed us how to do it. They showed us how to get it done, how to say no. How to say no, you don't get to ruin something beloved. You don't get to change this for your own agenda purposes just to try and squeeze out some money or eradicate what came before. That's one of those bright spots. But we got a major blow to everything this year. One of the biggest, hardest pills to swallow, one of the things that's a dagger to many people's hearts is the death of Doctor Who. <sighs> Jody Whitaker era with Chris Chinballs, it was a, a disaster and abomination. But there was, a, there was a possibility you could wipe it all away. Russell T. Davies, the man who brought Doctor Who back to life in 2005, was taking over for this next regeneration. They had a chance. It was a slim chance because Russell T. Davies, if anybody could be given legitimacy to fix it and change it and say, this didn't happen or let's just ignore this with one little retcon to the timeless children, it would have been him. But no, no. Russell T. Davies is a man broken by ideology obsessed with it, controlling every little aspect of his thwaking mind. And what has he done? He's irrevocably helped keep Doctor Who D.E.D. dead. There's no coming back from it. He did not retcon the Timeless Children. He said, I'm going to reaffirm it. And then we got the 60th specials. The first one last week, Star Beast. Oh, boy. If you haven't heard about it, Hear about it right now. That thing was an agenda nightmare. Pronouns galore. Reaffirmation of butchery of human beings. That's what it was. And that's what it will be going forward. Because they have done nothing to re-legitimize that William Hartnell was the first doctor. Nothing to re-legitimize that doctor who was about telling fantastic stories about giving you an idea, a, a problem to ponder in the show, but not hammering it over your head. That's not going to happen anymore. Russell T. Davies doesn't care. Doesn't care about you. Doesn't care about the fans. Spends his time on ex-Twitter harassing fans, telling them tough that they don't like it, calling them crybabies. That's what we're dealing with now. Doctor Who is done. There's no saving it. It's only there to be mocked and ridiculed and show you what happens when you let the cancer that is wokeism, virtue signaling, identitarianism, ideology infest something to its core and let it be warped and perverted for all time. Now, you can still go back and watch who. But you have to find your own little stopping point and say, this is where I've had enough. This is where my story of Doctor Who ends. So I've just given you the big list. What we've lost, a lot of the major franchises. And there are others along the way who have been damaged. I know I could go on for another 15, 20 minutes probably if we go through every little thing that's been destroyed by the agenda. But let's look at the bright side of all this. There is a bright side. The merchants of this agenda warping, horrible adaptations, they're failing on all ends. Yes, have they wrought destruction upon the things we love? Of course. But... Look what I mentioned before. Star Wars is damaged because a lot of the old fans are gone. But here's the thing. Disney. Disney has failed to profit on Star Wars. They failed to really make any sort of move to capture new generations. Disney Star Wars is a complete failure. The sequel trilogies... The normies, the real fans, they don't like them. It's this very small minority that likes them and constantly defends them on next Twitter. The High Republic, absolute failure. Thousands of people watch and collect its minuscule merch. Not tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, not millions, thousands. Every Disney Star Wars show on Disney Plus, complete and total Failure, both creatively and financially. And then let's not forget the complete and utter disaster that was the Galactic Star Cruiser. That thing cost them another billion dollars. You understand, Disney has failed on Star Wars. 
Disney Star Wars has not caught on. It's continuing to lose traction with every single day. And real Star Wars, those of us, those of us who are still fighting for it, we gain a little more traction every day. We are not, we were never the Tolkien fans. We were never United fan base. But those of us who have remained true to George's vision, to the glory that was the EU and real Star Wars, we get a little bit farther every day in winning this battle. And we're not going to give up. One day, a few years from now, when Lucasfilm is probably going to be sold off, we'll have another chance. But that chance will be there because we are the same people who kept it alive during the dark times, who supported it when there was just the original trilogy and a lot of merch. We'll be there. Everything Disney is a failure. We're winning because Disney is losing. Disney doesn't make money in the movie theaters. We're looking at the, the year of 2023, not just the fiscal year, but the entire calendar year where Disney hasn't made a profit on any single movie out there. Some of the bigger ones they lost money on, the biggest fish of all, Indiana Jones and the Dial-Up of Destiny, needed a billion dollars to break even. You can see... It lost about $700 million alone. And that's of the numbers we know about. Remember, all these are numbers we publicly know about. Remember the Little Mermaid? It needed about $750, $850 to break even. We'll say it lost another $200 million. How about Haunted Mansion? Yeah, that lost a couple hundred million dollars. Guess what? We're now at a billion dollars in loss. Elemental didn't even break even. Didn't lose that much money, but it did not break even. Guardians of the Galaxy, made enough to buy somebody a sandwich, but that's about it. Ant-Man and the Wasp, there's a few hundred more million lost. We are now over a billion dollars lost when it comes to Disney in the theaters. We can't count Captain Marvel in all of this, unfortunately, because even though it is the biggest disaster Disney may ever be looking at when it comes to a, a movie release, that's next fiscal quarter. That's a problem on next year's losses, not this year. But we could still say complete and total flop and failure. Disney Plus, black hole of money. We can't even really count how much money they lost because they've only really let out a little bit of what costs are on that. But we know they've lost hundreds of millions of dollars on Disney Plus. We've already mentioned the fiasco that was Galactic Star Cruiser. People are not walking into the parks as much as they used to. And the stock, the Disney stock hovers between $80, $90 constantly. It's not over $100 as it was during the heyday. Lots of money lost. And Disney admits they care more about pushing agenda than giving quality entertainment. So we're winning because Disney is losing. They've lost their grip on the hearts and minds of the people. People aren't caring anymore. That's your victory right there. That alone shows the victory. Yes, we've lost a lot, but the merchants of destruction, the merchants of this horrible, horrible abomination, endless adaptations they do, they're losing. What have we won? What have we lost? We lost a lot, but we've won. We've won the battle of hearts and minds when you think about it. Nobody really thinks this stuff is good anymore. Nobody with a working brain thinks this stuff is good. In the end, we will be victorious because we never gave up. We withstood the slings and arrows. We withstood the barbs. We withstood the propaganda, the fake news, the false narratives perpetrated by Disney, by all these big corporations who wanted to try and cast us, the real fans, the passionate ones, the lifeblood of everything. They wanted to cast us as the villains, as the hateful mongers, the toxic fan who hates everything, who is a racist and a bigot and a phobe. But it didn't work. We stood our ground. We said, no, you do not get to call us these names. You do not get to say we're the problem. You are the problem. Your fake cultivated stand base is the problem. They're the ones that routinely attack us for having a different opinion. We are the fans. We are the lifeblood of everything. Without us, nothing is successful. Nobody buys the merch. You fail. Nobody goes to see your movie. You fail. 
Nobody watches your show. You fail. We have that power. We have not forgotten we have that power. And that is why, in the end, even though we have lost so much, some of it cannot be salvaged. But we will continue to win because we will cherish what came before. We will remember that we were there first. We will remember that we are the ones who dictate what is canon and what is not. And then there's the Iron Age. The Iron Age is our ultimate victory. I will never forget all these wonderful shows, movies, series, franchises. I will never forget them. I will cherish them as they were intended to be displayed. Going forward, the creatively bankrupt Western entertainment industry, I don't expect anything from them. We'll get one or two things here and there. I don't think creativity is completely dead, but I don't expect anything. That's why it's the time of the Iron Age. That's our ultimate victory, where we, the fan, those of us who have that creative spark, that fire, that passion to create new ideas, new franchises, new IPs to give to you for your entertainment, those of us who are ready to do it, we are here. The Ripaverse, Comicsgate, my buddy Dre, Treble, Rhythm Within. Go check out his Indiegogo. Link in description below. All the people who are creating things from movies to music to games, comics, literature. Jed, my friend, Jed, the Hollywood scholar. He's a writer as well. He's got books. We are here. We are now. We, are, we just want to have fun and we want to give you fun. I myself, when the time is right, when the channel is big enough and strong enough and I can make the crowdfund happen the way I need it to, I will give you the first in my series of books that will go on for years. An entire universe ready, brand new to entertain you. That's the Iron Age. Fresh. Not replacements for what came before. I don't like that term. I'm not here to replace Star Wars. I'm not here to replace Star Trek. I'm here to just give you something new, something fresh, something fun, something devoid of agenda. Yes, classic themes will always be present in all works of creativity. But there's a difference between displaying classic themes and beating you over the head with agenda. You don't need to know what my ideology is. You don't need to know what I think about every little goddamn thing. You just deserve to have a fun story with heroes, villains, and high adventure. And that's what myself and many others in the Iron Age are going to deliver to you. So support us. Cherish what came before. But here and now, support us. Help us all grow. Help us get to that point where we can continually give you new adventures. All right, I'm done. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, a like would be very much appreciated. If you are new here, I invite you to subscribe to me right here on YouTube. We're able to earn your trust and support using facts and logic because facts and logic do not care about whiny Stan, fake fan, and SJW Fifi's. Hit the notification button for my videos. If you like what I'm preaching, by all means, leave a comment. I care what you, the passionate fan, think. You are the lifeblood of everything. I do not care what the fake fans, stands, and SJWs have to say because 201, they're all cowards behind keyboards. They'll be easily triggered, they'll want and they'll cry, but they have no power, and they know they're losing. Thank you again for watching. Take it easy. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you'd like to reach out to me, please email me at therandnerd at gmail.com for all channel business purposes. I am on Twitter now, mostly for promotion and sharing of videos, maybe a little shit stirring here and there, who knows, at therandnerd. You can also find me at the Geeks and Gamers forums under at Roas, and you can see me on Rumble and Odyssey under the Renaissance Nerd. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.